If you're anything like me and you've been dying for Nikon to bring out a macro lens for the Z system, then this might be of interest to you. Kenko, who as far as I know are a sister company of Hoya, actually produce a digital extension tube set for the Z system, so I decided to give it a try. The extension tube set comes in two flavours, a 10mm extension and a 16mm extension. Now you can also use these in conjunction with one another to get yourself a 26mm extension, but there are always going to be caveats when it comes to using extension tubes. The good news is that there's no glass in them, so it doesn't detract from the optical quality of any lens that you use it on. However, extension tubes aren't generally recommended for wide angle lenses or telephoto lenses. So you're best off using it on the mid range lenses from about 35 to maximum 70 millimeter. With wide angle lenses, the extension tube makes the closest focusing distance so, so close that you're actually focusing inside the lens. So it's impossible to use one of these with something like a 24 millimeter or a 20 mil. Whereas at the telephoto end, an extension tube honestly doesn't make that much difference to the reproduction or magnification ratio of the lens. So the middle of the road is really where you want to be. It's great for 50 mil lenses, works very well on the 24 to 70 f4 standard kit lens um, and I'm going to try it out with a few different lenses and show you what it looks like. Just to give you an idea I'm going to show you the closest focusing distance that you can get with the 24 to 70 f4 with this 10 millimeter extension tube so this is the shorter of the two extension tubes. Now at the 24 millimeter end the closest focusing distance I have is roughly about four, three, four centimeters, something like that. When I go to 50 mil, I actually have to go back a little bit to about 10 or 12 centimeters away from the subject. And then when I go to 70 mil, I have to be even further away. Now, that also gives me much less magnification when I'm at the 24 end and I can go right in close like that. So with the 16mm extension tube, I am almost in the flower at the 24 end. I mean, it's really very, very close. Whereas when I go to about 50mm, I'm about not quite half the distance, but almost half the distance of what I was before. And with the 70mm again, I have to be slightly further away. But again, I can still get everything in focus and that's quite nice reproduction ratio. It's not as close as a macro lens would be and it's not as magnified as a macro lens would be, but it's quite useful. Now let's try something a little bit special. Okay, I'm more doing this to prove a point than anything else, but with both extension tubes on, my closest focusing distance is inside the flower. I mean, it's so close you wouldn't want to work with that distance, but it's probably a few millimeters away. When you go to 50 mil, you've got a little bit more room to play, a centimeter or two, and again at 70 mil, you're, you're about there. So with both extension tubes, you could still actually use your standard kit lens if you wanted to. Oh, cat. <laughs> Come on, girlie. Come on. I love you, but just sit there. Good girl. My beloved 51.2. So the 51.2 is probably one of the nicest lenses to do this experiment with because of the shallow depth of field. However, saying that, you probably wanna be on a tripod to do this. So with the 50mm 1.2 and both extension tubes, I can get that far away and I'll show you the pictures. This is probably more B-roll stuff, but I'm just taking pictures with the 51.2 here, seeing how close I can get, which is pretty gosh darn close to be honest. Because I'm so close, I cannot shoot at f1.2. I mean, you know, what's in focus at f1.2 is like the tip of a petal. <laughs> it's not very workable. So probably best off with a 51.2 using a smaller extension than that, or certainly a smaller aperture. But it's really interesting to see the results. I'm gonna take a whole bunch of pictures of different things and share the results uh, on the screen.
caveats to using extension tubes are that you don't get accurate aperture information because although you may be shooting wide open and all that information is being passed from the extension tube to the camera, it doesn't give you your effective aperture. The closer you get to a subject, the less light the lens can actually take in. So the effective aperture isn't given to the camera, but you can use an online calculator if that's important to you. Another problem is that your depth of field will be shallower, so you might have to use a smaller aperture than you're used to. With the 51.2, for example, I found myself having to shoot at about f4 to get even a slither of the subject in focus, whereas ordinarily I'd shoot wide open with this. I do hope this has been useful for you and if you like our videos, please do give us a thumbs up and a subscribe so that we can provide more content for you.